Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us this evening. My name is Tisha Johnson. I am the Senior Director of Admissions for the Illinois College of Optometry, and I have the pleasure of uh, introducing you to two of our uh, alumni who will be uh, Hello, speaking everyone. with us this, uh, us this evening. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and start. Um, Dr. Ruiz, if you want to introduce yourself, tell us where you're from, um, maybe what undergraduate institution you went to, and your current mode of practice. All right, yeah, for sure. Uh, so, yep, I'm Tom Ruiz. Uh, I grew up in Chicago myself uh, on the northwest side in Jefferson Park. Um, right now, I'm currently out in the southwest suburbs uh, in Darien, Illinois, so still an Illinois resident. Uh, I went to UIC downtown. I graduated with a bachelor's in biology. Uh, I also graduated from the Honors College as well. And then I'm also, again, I went to Illinois College of Optometry. Um, and my current mode of practice is, it's kind of a hybrid between, uh, I would say, retail and private. And then also, I'm in the process of starting my own private practice. So, yeah. Great, thank you. And Dr. Katouf. So hi everyone and welcome. Um, it's, I love hearing stories like Dr. Ruiz. It's always, I'm always so proud of our graduates. Um, so in saying that, I am actually on staff at ICO. I grew up in Northeastern Ohio and I went to undergrad many, many years ago at Miami University, Miami of Ohio, and um, headed straight to Chicago for ICO, which is, has a deep that's like my family. And um, I've been, gosh, I, almost 25 years, I think I've been on staff at ICO, which is so unbelievable to me. And I am teaching classes in the clinics, of course, and just get to interact with our incredible students, staff, faculty, and just every day is an adventure for sure. So that's my story. All right, great. So for the uh, folks who are um, joining us, you do have an opportunity to ask questions. I will start off with a series of questions I have for our guests, but if you have questions, definitely put them in the chat and then we'll have somebody sharing those questions uh, with me and we'll make sure we get your questions uh, asked and answered. So I'm gonna start off with you, um, Dr. Katouf. How did you get interested in optometry? So my interest in optometry is familial. So my dad is an optometrist and, you know, I grew up in my dad's practice. And I, I really think that my draw to optometry was that optometry wasn't work to my dad. It was just part of him. And he loved his practice and his patients and our profession. It still to this day does. He oozes love and affection and pride in regards to this profession as I do the same. So I grew up with it. I mean, I literally grew up, you know, you hang out in your parents' practice. It's it's part, especially when my mom worked there too. It was just where we hung out. I started working in my dad's practice every day in the summer when I was 11 years old and handling patients and pre-testing and filing and, you know, you name it. And so um, it wasn't a, my dad's an optometrist, I guess I'll be an optometrist kind of thing. It was, it was a real, his passion overflowed. And I think that was where, that's where my introduction came. Okay, awesome. Dr. Ruiz? Uh, yeah, for me, it was, I always wanted to be in the medical field, and it kind of took me a while to figure it out. I mean, I, as far as for optometry, it was junior year of uh, undergraduate where I decided that that was kind of the route I wanted to go. Reason why I chose optometry was because um, I wanted to relate to my patients and not just be in the medical field. I wanted to be able to help them out. I wear glasses and contacts, and uh, I wanted to be able to be, to I guess, familiarize with them and be able to help them on things that, again, that I struggle with myself as well. Um, so that's kind of how I was introduced to um, optometry. It's it's good because we have two ends of the spectrum. I'm a first generation optometrist. So, um, and no one in my family is in the medical field. Um, all my sisters are teachers. So I'm the only one who went the medical route. So, but yeah. All right, so I'm going to continue with you. So when you were, you know, deciding on optometry schools to apply to, what made you um, choose ICO in terms of applying and then ultimately attending? So ultimately it was location. Uh, I, I'm not going to lie. Um, so as far as my background goes, uh, I'm Italian and Puerto Rican and my mom is the Italian one and she's very... Um, 
uh, I guess sheltered us a lot as kids. So she didn't want us to move out of state. So that's why ICO was one of the main ones was based on location. And then also the curriculum, uh, looking at the curriculum and kind of how fast you get into clinic and you start patient care is probably what sets ICO apart from other schools. Um, I, I mean, I'll probably talk about it later, how I felt like the clinical program at ICO is what made me feel confident day one of starting in my full-time career as an optometrist. So those are the main two reasons why is location. I mean, Chicago has a great history and it's rich in, in culture and everything. Um, you're right by Bronzeville and there's other surrounding areas that are great to visit. And uh, again, also the curriculum there. Dr. Katsouf? So for me, um, I, you know, again, I will say my dad is an ICO grad. Again, there's never any pressure. There's never like, you must do these things. Not at all. Um, I did apply to Ohio State being an Ohio resident and ICO, but um, I'm going to back up a little bit about what Dr. Rhee said and in, in maybe um, expound on it a little bit more, that our clinical program, I, I truly believe there's nothing like it. I, I always say, I mean, all optometry schools give good educations, I'm sure, but I have been to many schools on many levels. I've worked at other schools through residency training and things. There is nothing like the clinical experience that you get at ICO. I, I loved hearing Dr. Rhee say, who's you know a very young graduate, that he felt confident the you know the day he stepped into practice. And the reason for that is you get exposed to things through our clinical setting that are so complex and so complicated and so multifaceted and multi-layered every single day. I told you earlier I've been here for 25 years. There is not one day, and I, I mean this from the bottom of my heart. There's not one day that goes by that I am not in clinic and just blown away by what I see, have to ask people for help and assistance. Not, you know, That's okay to say, we have amazing experts. The complexity of what we see prepares you for what you do every day with a level of confidence and knowledge that it just can't be matched. And I, I don't believe I say that with any um, bias at all. So that was my, and that was my reason for choosing ICO, just knowing I could not get this clinical experience anywhere else. All right, great. Thank you. So um, both of you, looking back on your time as students, what would you say um, stood out the most? I know our clinical education, I feel like, is second to none, but outside of that, anything else that um, stood out for you during your time at ICO? Dr. Katoof, if you want to take that. I think, you know, I don't want to sound too... I loved ICO the minute I stepped foot. I loved it as a student. I love it as a faculty member. I it, it's the it's there's just a familial sense, and I think that was my greatest. Last year, I felt so terrible when students couldn't come and interview at ICO. I mean, we have a beautiful campus. We have amazing technology. We have an incredible clinic. Like we can tell you that. We can show you pictures of that. But I really mean it. When you step foot into our campus, there is just an air of warmth and love and family and connection. And that is between the students, the faculty, the staff, the maintenance staff. Like, this is not a place where most people work for a year or two. Like, we have grown up together. We are a family. We are connected through each each of those different facets of our institution and to me that I see it was like that as a student. I loved being part of the different clubs. I. Sharon Ewer, who worked in your office, Tisha, was worked at ICO when I was a student, and I used to sit in an office by hers and do work and then do my studying and, you know, knew her through those years. So the connection is deep, and I think that's what makes ICO. It, it's fun, it's bonding, you're learning, and you leave with amazing bonds, friendships, and a career that will serve you for your whole life. Yes, I would definitely agree um, with you on that. I know a lot of applicants will say that is their interview day experience and coming to campus and seeing that ICO is just a good fit for them. And we think that fit is definitely important. You want to see yourself at this institution. You're going to be there for three years, nine months from first year to uh, fourth year graduation. So it's very important to find that fit for you and making sure that you can see yourself walking the halls, being a student here, engaging with our faculty, our staff, and our patients. Um, Dr. Wes, I'll turn it over to you and get your thoughts on that question. Yeah, um, 
for sure. I mean, Dr. Katu hit it right on the head as well. It, part of my answer too was uh, those bonds that you make with your classmates and the faculty as well. And it's just a sense that everybody's in it together. Uh, it's really not a type of environment where it's you feel like you're alone. Um, everyone's in there for a common goal. And uh, that's you make lifelong friend, friends uh, with your classmates. There's still two friends, even though they don't live in Illinois, they live in Minnesota and Washington. And uh, I still talk to them. And it's that's one of the reasons why. Uh, another thing from my days as a student, and it's funny because I was talking to my tech about this today because she was interested in optometry school. And I was talking about how, like for clinic, how you carry around your BIO bag as a student, you carry around your all your equipment and you put it in your locker. And like it, it, when I know current students will think I'm crazy by saying this, but I actually kind of miss it. I miss like the grind and like the just the everyday, um, I guess, uh, setting at ICO, because again, it, it is a different experience. I'm not going to lie. And again, when you see what you've accomplished afterwards, it's definitely um, fulfilling. And when you look back on it, it's probably one of the best academic memories that you'll have. Great. Thank you. Now, um, would you do anything differently, do you think? Or was, if you had to do it all over again, would you do exactly what you did? Um, so looking back on it, um, I'm happy with my career choice as an optometrist. Uh, and looking back on it, the only thing I think I would have changed was maybe not commuting. Uh, commuting was a little tough. I commuted four years for undergraduate and then another three years uh, for the for the curriculum part of ICO. So it was a little bit of a, I guess, um, I guess a lot of a, I guess strain on my body for driving. Uh, driving on the Kennedy is no joke. So um, <laughs> that's the only thing I changed. Yeah, I always encourage students, even if they're from the Chicagoland area, definitely consider moving close to campus, if not in our residential complex, which is located right across the street from the school. Um, and then also the weather part of that. You know, I'm sure driving in the snow was no fun, uh, in the, you know, anywhere in the Chicagoland area. Um, but definitely uh, being closer to campus, I think, also helps you um, in terms of setting and, and being engaged. And not that a student can't, but it's always nice to be a little bit closer. Um, Dr. Katouf, do you have um, any thoughts on maybe anything you would do differently? I, when you asked me that, the first thing that pops in my head is I would have studied a little bit less. And I don't mean that in a, I, I was just so hyper, not hyper, just like, I always, I guess I, I always had the attitude, which has taken me years of maturity to get out of that more is better. And just because I'm sitting there studying doesn't mean that I'm, it's necessary or that I'm taking it in. I mean, I, I was a good student and I worked really hard. So when I say study less, it was more for enjoy things. You, you live in this incredible place. You're around all of these incredible people. Like just because you sit in front of your notes for hours, it doesn't mean you're taking it in. It's okay to take a couple hours and go out to dinner or go work out. You know, it's not that I didn't do those things, but I wish I had had a little bit more of a enjoy the experience because like Dr. Ruiz said, it's an incredible experience of four years of a closeness that you will establish with your classmates, with your faculty, with our staff, that is um, really special and you don't want to miss out on that. It, work is hard, but you'll do it and more isn't always better. Okay, all right. And so I'll continue with you, Dr. Katouf. Um, if I'm not mistaken, you've done a residency, correct? Mm -hmm. And yes. you can tell us a little bit about, um, you know, what made you pursue a residency and what that experience was like. Sure, um, I think I, I kind of, I came into optometry school with the idea of pursuing residency education. Um, I think I came into the idea of knowing that I really loved pediatrics and that contact lenses was an interest of mine too. Um, you know, how do people choose what subspecialty they might want to go into? I think a lot of it's due to mentoring. I had a dear mentor, Dr. Sue Cotter, who is out in one of the schools in California now, who kind of took me under her wing and just shared her passion with me and that rubbed off on me and so it kind of sent me in the pediatrics route which I, I do love doing but I do the um, residency experiences are, are incredible it's a really intense compressed year of clinical education where I say you leave optometry school knowing a, a little bit about a lot of things and whether you do a residency or not these our medical professions are a lifetime of learning you, you don't just come out and be like I know it all you know I still 
clearly don't know it all. So um, I loved my residency in the sense of I, I did leave ICO and I went to um, the state of State University of New York, the SUNY College of Optometry, and I did a pediatrics and binocular vision residency there. So it gave me the opportunity to have, you know, different experiences with different faculty, different methods of learning and clinic and education, and then um, kind of decide what was mine. So many people say it's like five years of compressed clinical experience in one year and it, it was very intense and an incredible learning experience do i think people can be madly successful optometrists without a residency absolutely it just um it's a great way to market yourself to take to someone's private practice and say i can build your pediatric practice i can build your contact lens practice whatever it might be or just expand your knowledge Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. And Dr. Rees, you didn't do a residency, if I'm correct. Was your thought to just immediately go into practice or did you consider it but maybe changed your mind? So that was something that I was kind of flip-flopping when I was in uh, optometry school. Uh, first year, I was, you know, I was like, I, I do want to do a residency and I kind of want to help, like what Dr. Katu said, like get that clinical experience and kind of further my understanding in ocular diseases and all that kind of stuff. And um, I think as the, I got closer to the four year mark, um, it was, I the reason why I shied away from doing it is, um, I think just more so again of like the grind of like clinic and of school, I think I was ready to um, kind of start my career and everything. And it, it was, um, you know, looking back on it, I, do like it's like a 50 50 thing because people always ask too like oh do you wish you did a residency and it's like I do and then I also I'm happy that I didn't because uh, again like Dr. Katu said you will get a lot of clinical knowledge even when you're starting uh, and working at whatever mode of practice you choose I mean again I'm in uh, I work in target optical and it's like a retail slash private practice setting but I mean I've already seen two retinal detachments and uh, you'll see a lot of diseases that, you know, it's just, um, but yeah, that was kind of my reason as far as for not to going into residency it was just kind of, I guess I was drained towards the end of the four years and, um, but yeah. Understandable, but I think it's a great example of uh, students being able to see that you can do it and pursue a residency um, or not, and you still are going to have a, a great career. It's really just personal choice. I always encourage students definitely just at least consider it. Consider, you know, specializing whether you choose to or not at the end of uh, your time in optometry school. Uh, not a problem. I know for us, anywhere between 25 to about 33 percent of our graduating class each year will do a residency. Um, and it's interesting, Dr. Katu, if you mentioned uh, going to SUNY to do yours. I know we get students coming from various optometry schools uh, coming to ICO to do their residency. So it's a nice option too see something different, see a different program. Um, so I always encourage students, definitely keep your options open. Uh, you never know. So I asked you both, um, what gives you sort of the most satisfaction with your job? Dr. Kuth, if you want to go. Sure, thank you. So, um, you know, I, I, I can just reflect on my patient um, clinic on Tuesday. And it was really funny that when I looked at the schedule, I had two physicians and one's in his 80s and the other, she's probably in her 60s and has a, a grown son who has cerebral palsy. I have been seeing these patients for so many years and I thought, how did they both get on the schedule on the same day? Because first of all, I have such a bond with them. I have so much history with them, but they both talk so much and I love to talk to them. And I just thought, oh my gosh, how am I going to get through a clinic session with them and other patients? There's going to be so much talking and bonding. But I, that's what it is. It's just the warmth that happens in the experiences with these patients. And, you know, here I have like literally an 80 year old world renowned physician who just could not solve his double vision issues and is so grateful to us for being able to change his life and get him back to, you know, he's still 
still publishes and reads and lectures and everything and in back he's very you know healthy and high functioning and then um for my other patient um she's a retired physician and she has a son who i've been seeing since he's three and now he's in his 20s and he has cerebral palsy but she's a pusher with him and he's educated and going to college and pursuing a career and um it just those bonds it it's the most spectacular thing and just the history that we all build together. And like Dr. Ruiz said earlier, how you can make changes in these, make positive changes in these patients' lives. So that's what makes my day, every day, just shine. And it's the same with students. We get the same, seeing, you know, students like Dr. Ruiz go out and, and shine and be so successful. There's such an oozing pride that happens with that. Yeah, I would agree. Full disclosure, uh, Dr. Reese was one of my former work study students and seeing him, you know, as a student and working with us through the admissions process and now seeing him uh, as a doctor is always great. It's always uh, uh, very nice to help students make it through the process and help them sort of reach their goals. So um, that's always great, even for the staff um, at ICO. So Dr. Reyes, if you want to answer that question uh, about your job satisfaction. Oh, yeah. Uh, I mean, it, it's exactly what Dr. Katoof said. It's the impact that you have on your patient's life. I am I mean, I'm the class of 2019. I haven't been practicing too long. Uh, and But it's I've already had a lot of experiences, even within the first year of um, uh, working. I'll never forget, I had a 13-year-old patient, and she wanted to try contacts for the first time. And uh, she was able to get the contacts in, and she was just a very eccentric person. And when she was able to see how much better she saw with contacts versus the glasses, she like just jumped out of the chair and said, I'm a changed woman, which is hilarious because she's, first of all, it's just a little 13 year old. And then, but it's the little things like that, that kind of get you like excited and just make you happy about being a physician and being there for your patients. Another story um, as well is um, I'll never forget when a, patient said that they wanted to come in for a second opinion and um, they were scared about something and just being able to be there for them and just kind of talk them through it. She she uh, got really bad anxiety from it. And um, when she talked with me, she said that, um, you know, I helped save her life because she was having troubles with the anxiety and I helped kind of ease that. And I mean, you go more than you go beyond more than the scope of optometry. Um, you are there for your patients because they'll start talking to you about things that don't even relate to the eyes. You get to know their family, you get to know them, and um, they'll talk to you about things that are going on that aren't issues that, again, are optometry related. So uh, again, it's for me, it's not like a, I'm not trying to be corny by saying it's all about the patients, but I mean, um, it, that's honestly what gives me the most satisfaction. Oh, great. Thank you. Thank you. So I have a couple of questions that we have um, received from our audience. So the first one is for you, Dr. Katouf. Um, it says, on a practical level, how much has the field of optometry changed since you first began your practice? In what ways has it changed? Yeah, that's a, that's a really good question. Um, you know, my initial reaction to that is, you know, has it changed? Well, of course it has, but I think the thing about ICO is that we always keep up. We always keep up with the highest level of technology, new ways to treat things. We always have the most up-to-date equipment and management of different conditions. So it's such a natural thing to be constantly learning, to be constantly trained on all of this, that I almost initially say, oh, it hasn't changed that much, but it, it has, it's changed quite significantly. Um, whether it be through, you know, if you look at contact lens area, the addition of new products that create such higher levels of visual capabilities for patients. When we talk about the technology of mapping optic nerves and taking photos and different um, technology that allows us to not dilate patients and still get a view of the peripheral retina, the back of the eye, you know, it, it goes on and on. And even in my field of pediatrics with vision therapy and virtual reality and different types of um, ways to monitor patients reading and mo mo motility, you know, tracking issues, it, there's a lot of change, but I guess it seems less drastic to me because that was one thing I always respected about ICO as a student and then having gone to a different institution and coming back 
you're always keeping up. There, there's no option. You're just constantly learning, constantly keeping up, always on the cusp of practicing our profession. So th those are the things, even technology. We always learn something new. You guys know that. It's a new program. It's a new piece of equipment. It's, it's always new, but it does elevate your practice. Okay, awesome. Thank you. Um, so we have another question, and Dr. Ruiz, I'll start with you with this question. It says, what are some of the things that I should look for when I'm trying to identify a good optometry school? Are there specific characteristics that you think are important? Um, so what I will say is definitely uh, comfortability. Uh, make sure that it's an environment you feel comfortable in. Um, you'll know that like uh, I remember when I went on my tour, when I was uh, doing my interview and everything. And I've also heard that when I did work in admissions and I was talking with prospective students and they would tell me their experiences at other colleges and they'd be like, you know, I would walk around and I would tour and, you know, it just didn't feel, I guess, um, like they were uh, not so much is appreciated, but they just felt like they were just kind of there. Uh, more as ICO, again, it's uh, you feel more so in like a community. It's more of a community setting. So I would say definitely make sure you feel comfortable. Second thing is, you know, always try and reach out to see like from current students how they're doing or how they're studying or what they think the curriculum is like and um, that kind of stuff. And I think also if you plan on living around the area or um, I guess also dorming or not dorming, but living in the residential complex uh, to just see if that's something that you'd feel comfortable doing as well. All right, thank you. Dr. Katouf, do you have anything to add to that? I would just say ultimately that your ultimate goal in optometry school is to build a career as an optometrist. And when you're looking at optometry schools, like who is going to, which school is going to give you the tools to do that? And I, I really do not believe that, um, I, I believe that ICO just is, is always accelerating when it comes to knowledge-based clinical experience, the numbers of patients you see, the kinds of patients that you see, the variety of conditions that you will encounter. And um, nothing will phase you when you leave ICO. You will encounter complex clinical situations that you don't you don't have every piece of knowledge you need to solve that problem right there. But it will not phase you. You will know where to go. You will know what to do. You will you will be able to handle it. So to me, it's what school is going to prepare you for your career. And then the other thing I'd say too is because we have a bit of a larger student body, I think it's really special that we attract students from all over this country as well as Canada. So you get that kind of neat exposure to so many people and just kind of making those connections that can really offer you career opportunities through the years as well. So I think the size of our institution and the variety and diversity that that brings too. And I'll chime in a little bit with that, um, at least from that admissions perspective, we do receive from a lot of students that they look at um, the clinical experience of diversity and patients that they're going to see. Um, some will look at board score uh, pass rates. Um, it's really important for you to sit down and think about what's important for you. What are things that will help you make your decision? Is location important or is that a non-factor? Do you, do you want to look more at the board pass rates and clinical experience? So really um, sort of sit down, think about what's important to you. I mean, it's going to vary for every applicant um, and every student, but thinking about it now, you know, reviewing websites, speaking to alum. If you ever need to uh, speak to any uh, ICO alum or if you're curious and want to engage with ICO alumni, definitely reach out to the admissions office. We'll be more than happy to put you in contact with alum in your area. Um, and you can hear, you know, more stories about how ICO has an, uh, impacted their optometric career. Um, so my next question um, for you, and I'll start with you, um, Dr. Wes. Um, how do you feel ICO prepares you for your career? I know you are, you know, a young alum. And so being out for a few years, ha, ha, can you see sort of the impact ICO has had in just this short amount of time already? Um, yes. So again, it all kind of goes back to your clinical experience. Uh, seeing patients as soon as second year is, I think, very important 
because again, it gets you not only comfortable in a sense of like your knowledge and everything, but also kind of getting your bedside manner and just kind of getting comfortable with the exam flow. Um, now, ICO prepared me again because our curriculum is, again, I feel like one of the best. And that, again, I'm not trying to be biased. And then also with uh, our attendings that we have, it's we have some of the best attendings that you could ask for. Um, it's very important that we, again, we all work as a team in clinic. And even what Dr. Katoof said, like you're going to encounter things in clinic or in practice that you're going to look at and you're going to be like, oh, what is that? And it's going to be, you're going to refer back to your um, eye manuals and all that other stuff. And it's not bad to do that. But what the difference is, is you'll feel confident as a physician to where even though you're a little stumped on a case, you'll still be able to handle the situation and navigate it to make sure that your patients feel comfortable because you've been in clinic for long. And because that you've, um, you know, worked with such a diverse group of patients at the IEI or the Illinois Eye Institute, I mean, like, like Dr. Kutub said, there's not probably a, a week or a rotation that goes by that you won't see something that when you study it, it's like, this is a one in 50,000 chance of you seeing in a, a patient and you will actually see it. Um, so that's why I, ICO gets you prepared to see those rare cases. And also it helps you with the average everyday two diopter myope that, you know, you don't think is it'll be fun or interesting because you want to see all the diseases. Um, but again, it just kind of helps you as far as your confidence as a physician. All right. Thank you, Dr. Katouf. Um, I would say even, you know, we've, we've, we've spoken a lot on you know, knowledge base and clinical education. I think I see also, um, I think it has a lot to do with the size and scope of our institution and all the different opportunities that that affords. It also prepares you um, for the business side of your life because I'm sure Dr. Weiss could speak to, to the fact that, you know, the doctor part, you get real good at that real fast, but then you have to, you have to run a business, you have to run your business and you have to manage people. And, um, you know, there's just so many different opportunities. So whether it be work study opportunities to start to learn how to manage people, be part of research projects, um, you know, maybe you're managing the gym and you need to make sure all the students are respectful. I mean, that's where these kinds of things start. And then we have practice management courses and different clubs for all different areas of interest of practice because the honest truth is we need to teach you how to be great doctors but you also then have to go out and you know learn the business side of things so i think ico has a really nice balance between those things and ico always affords students whether it becomes whether it's clinical learning or practice management types of things for extras there's always extra lectures, extra conferences, extra things where you can take in as much as you want during those four years. Great, thank you. Yep. So um, I asked you both. Um, so what advice do you have for our prospective applicants who are watching this? Um, anything that you feel that you know they that you recommend that they do as they are making their way from undergrad to applying to professional school to a uh, gaining entry to professional school, being a student at ICO. Dr. Um, Katoof, if you want to go ahead and start. Sure. Um, you know, I think more than anything, um, I'm sure Tisha has many times connected you with a current student that you could always ask questions. But I think the number one thing is you have to come see us. You have to, you know, apply, come see us. I, I don't believe there's anything not to like, but that's when you, you can feel it. You can feel the passion, you can feel the family, you can feel the community. You can see how impressive um, our clinical spaces are and our you know clinical technology and our lecture halls or you know whatever it might be and all of the different opportunities that we have. So that's my number one thing, come and see us. Um, you know, you can read about things on paper, you can ask all the questions that you want, but when you come to see us, you can really see how it feels right. I would agree. So um, to that end, students can always email us at admissions at ico.edu to set up a time to tour the campus. We recently redid our website and we have plenty of videos and pictures out there, but I would agree with Dr. Katoof. It's nice to actually come and see uh, what the campus looks like and 
even um, see our clinical setting as well. Our clinic is attached to the college. I had an applicant just this week say, you know what, I didn't realize your clinic was actually attached to the college. It is. And so for some, that um, matter of convenience could be a deciding factor. So definitely come uh, and take a tour um, of the campus. And Dr. Reese, I'll ask you um, that same question, your advice. Uh, so yeah, my advice would be to, again, make sure you do your research. And also, um, if you're planning on shadowing uh, doctors or optometrists, and that's always good to get some shadowing hours in. To, and also pick like different modes of practice just to see as well, uh, to see kind of the differences or if you're interested in one versus the other and kind of how that would shape you and your thoughts of what type of mode you would want to go into. As far as the application process, it's always good as far as just to, um, you know, remain patient and also just, um, I, I always live by the motto that nothing worth having in life comes easy. And it's just always working hard and hard work always pays off and just, you know, staying patient and passionate about what you want to do and just kind of, um, like I said, just going through the grind and just trying to get those, um, I guess your, uh, I guess career goals set. So that's the other thing that I would say, uh, but yeah. All right, thank you. Um, I'll ask um, Carly to see if we have any other questions um, for our speakers before we start wrapping up here. Um, I do want to thank you before we end. Thank you both for your advice and your time. I do appreciate you spending this evening with us and sharing more about how ICO has prepared you for um, your respective careers. Um, and I guess I sort of as a follow up question for Dr. Katouf about her career. When you finished your residency, were you thinking, yes, I want to go into teaching, I want to do academics or how did you sort of get make that connection from, all right, yeah, I actually want to be influencing the next generation of optometrists? Yeah, no, that's a great question. That was a real battle for me because, you know, I, I, I shared earlier that I grew up with a dad in private practice and I honestly came into optometry school just assuming I would go back to my dad's practice. He has a beautiful practice, a multifaceted practice. Um, he wasn't controlling or, you know, none of that was going on. So I, I when I was at in at SUNY, I, I, I definitely took a lot of teaching opportunities at ICO. I, I TA'd, I tutored students, I did class reviews for some professors and things like that. So clearly there was an interest there, but nothing I ever looked at and thought I would have an academic career. But when I was at SUNY doing my residency, one of my mentors said to me, you know, you should really think about academics. And it ended up that they asked me to stay there for a year. And I did. And that's kind of where that bug bit. And I, I almost felt like I was letting down my dad or you know something like that but he was very open to it and I remember my mom said like you can do whatever you want to do and I was like really <laughs> you know? and um so it was a little bit of a battle but that's kind of how that happened it, no it was not something that I I never I never came to optometry school thinking that I think the enjoyment was there but I didn't but on, on those lines teacher I wanted to tell one quick story that when I did go to um, my residency at SUNY I mean I enjoyed my experience there I learned so much but when I got there, you know, one of the things I mentioned before is how ICO is so familial and it's so warm and ICO really takes care of you. Like we really take care of our students. So I remember I was like, um, where's your bookstore? And they're like, oh, there's a Barnes and Noble down the street. And I'm like, well, where's your mail room? And they're like, there's a FedEx down the street. Like everything you were so on your own. And I was so used to this, like everything and Tisha mentioned under one roof and the dorms across the street and the, you know, if you need something at the bookstore, it's there. And if you need to mail something, they take care of it for you. And it's just so, it was just so funny to me. It was so New York. It was so like, you're on your own young one. And, um, but it really was something that I, I, I didn't know how special that was until I left it. Yeah, definitely understandable, understandable. Mm -hmm. Well, I think we have one more question that came through, and I think this is pr probably more for me. Uh, there is a question about uh, virtual tours for those that live far away. Now, we do have some 360 tours on our website and actually on our YouTube channel. Uh, but if somebody's interested in more of a virtual tour, uh, reach out to our office at admissions at ico.edu, and we'll see what we can do to set that up for you. 
um, because we'll be more than happy to show you around. I feel like our videos are great, but there is so much more to see um, at ICO that it's um, really hard to capture all of that in one long video. So we can arrange something to um, give you sort of a look-see in the different areas of the college. Also on YouTube, that would be great is if you look at um, our residency videos. And while you may not be thinking about a residency at this point, but those videos give you an opportunity to see the different uh, suites that are located within the Illinois Eye Institute. So I encourage students to look at those. And those are usually about, I would say maybe about two to three minutes long. So it gives you a look-see into the clinical side of the school. Well, with that, I don't think we have any uh, other questions that have come through. Um, I do thank everyone for their time. I don't know if either the doctors have any sort of final thoughts or any closing remarks they want to um, share with our students or even, you know, words of inspiration or encouragement for future applicants that are out there watching. Um, I, I guess I'll, uh, I guess one thing I do want to say, because I was thinking on this as I was driving home today was, um, that if it's anything that COVID has kind of taught us during the last like couple of years or so, and especially for our field is that our field is definitely growing and it, it is continuing to grow. So there's a lot of opportunities for optometrists. And um, there, I've also talked with a lot of different uh, careers as patients and how everything is turning more towards telehealth or all these other different things that are impacting the eyes with the screens and how it's impacting kids and um, how it's affecting adults even. And that's why I feel like our career and our doctors are in a really good state to kind of help patients in the next coming years with um, how things are, have kind of developed. And uh, I mean, also with studies that have shown that one third of the population soon is gonna be nearsighted. Um, and that's thanks to all of our phones and <laughs> all that fun stuff. So. Uh, but no, it's our field is definitely growing and it's definitely, I guess, a lot of opportunities that are there. All right, thank you. And on that note, I think we will um, end our webinar. I do thank everyone who has joined us and who may be watching this um, video later. Again, if you have any questions, do not hesitate to reach out to my team and I, and we can be reached at admissions at ico.edu.